What's up everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you're all doing well today and welcome to today's video, which is a news video where really I want to be well, I'm going to be posing a question to you guys, you the viewer. I want to get everyone's opinion on Project Restart because a lot of people are split on this situation. Former Chelsea doctor Eva Carnero has spoken to Henry Winter of the Times and she has basically demonstrated concern of the Premier League coming back prematurely. And you've got to ask, is the Premier League coming back really to sort of fulfill financial obligations? Although the Bundesliga has started and in many ways started well, they restarted football because of financial obligations ultimately. We all want to watch football, of course, and I want to talk about that today, but I want to pose the question to you guys, is it premature? The game has never seen a crisis like this, and no one really knows what's going to happen and how to deal with it. So testing times indeed. Before I start expressing myself on the subject, I want to welcome you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so. I do upload on the platform every single day, so please do consider subscribing and why not like the video to help a brother out. Alright guys, let's get into it. So let's talk about the Bundesliga first, because I'm going to assume everyone's up to date with what's happening with a global pandemic. Germany as a country flattens the curve very, very well in Europe and Generally, they're quite an efficient nation when it comes to most things, and they were dealing with COVID. After flattening the curve so well, they had players coming back to training quite early, and of course, they've just concluded their first game week back from the big break. Now, like I said in my previous video, the derby between Dortmund and Schalke was probably can be seen as a great success. The protocols, the new protocols were met. You saw like the substitutes benches, you know, they put new chairs in space apart two meters. Everyone's wearing protective gear. Although there were some celebrations between players, everything looked like it was sensible. One of the biggest concerns as well was that fans were going to come outside the stadium, especially in such a high profile derby, but that wasn't an issue as well. So generally it's a big tick box. And of course the Premier League and clubs and teams and managers and everyone's meeting today to discuss the next phase of football in England. But it's not a rosy golden road to success and the resumption of football, no. Lots of people have been explaining their concerns, you know, the likes of Wayne Rooney in his, in his column, Troy Deeney's come out, of course Tammy Abraham of Chelsea's expressed a concern of how he would feel so bad if he passed COVID on to his father who has asthma. The likes of Danny Rose as well and a lot of players have come out and said it's not fair. It's left a delicate debate because a lot of people have had to go back to work and this is their work but then again it's entertainment, it's not necessary. Football is not necessary although the government and certain bodies will say it'll ease the nation, uh, dist like act as a distraction therapy from what is a generally quite morbid time, we have to take into consideration the safety of the players while also, you know, do you want to bring paramedics and doctors away from hospitals and bring them into stadiums? There's a fine balancing act here. Well-respected medical professional and former Chelsea doctor Eva Carnero spoke to Henry Winter of the Times and she pretty much said, look, we can't plan any further to start the resumption of football until phase one is done, until we've got the players back and training and testing. It's pointless looking forwards, you know, right now regardless, because you're going to get people excited, and then if something happens, there's going to be problems. Originally, June the 8th was being spoken of as a potential date for the resumption of football in the Premier League. Now, we can all assume that's probably a little bit too premature, but still people are assuming that football may resume by the end of next month. So it leaves you in a position where you feel excited yet concerned. I myself have often stayed on the fence with this. Of course, I want to see football resume. I love football. I work in it. But at the same time, I'm very, very concerned. I've seen the stress on the NHS. I did a, a fundraiser campaign on this channel. I really wanted to help out. Loads of you kindly donated to that as well. So it kind of leaves me in a peculiar position where I'm discussing with people, trying to get everyone's thoughts and opinions about the resumption of football. Of course, if the Bundesliga keep going well, the next game week's fine, people aren't testing positive, uh, you know, people are watching football, people are staying in home, at home more because they're watching football, Bundesliga football then, you know, you can start having positive thoughts about it. It's all very well looking at the Bundesliga and the Germans in general and seeing how productively they've dealt with things. <laughs> I don't want to be a generalist here, but England is not Germany. Now, I'm not saying England can't cope like Germany can or how they have coped, but England is a small, densely populated island. And also, another important thing that I wanted to talk about in this video 
is the neutral venues. People want to scrap the neutral venues idea now. I understand that because it went so well in Germany in the opening game weekend. It comes down to the question of can you trust English fans, Premier League fans? Um, you know, are derbies more fierce in England than Germany? Who's to say? But who's? Uh, I, can I like trust the England fans not to herd outside a stadium? I don't know, man. Like, what Liverpool fans are about to win the title for the first time in like 30 years? Are they going to flock outside Anfield? I'm not so sure. I genuinely don't know. It does look like the whole neutral venues thing has been thrown out the window, or certainly enough clubs objected to it so that they won't do it essentially. Even though I was kind of conflicted, I was like, why does it matter? It's a neutral venue in an empty space. It's in many ways like a training game regardless in terms of atmosphere. So where, why does it matter whether, whether, you know, the location you're in? But someone corrected me quite rightly about, you know, travel distance and just how you feel about your own home dressing room. There's probably like a ritualistic thing about being in your own dressing room and going out and playing rather than being in something else. And if you have more home games than others, then you're losing an advantage. So I kind of understand all of that stuff. Keeping in the home venues as well kind of might make sense if the public can be trusted not to attend games. Now a lot hangs in the balance on whether this should happen or not. I am still on the fence in many ways on the resumption of football and I do feel it's a bit of a moral dilemma. I think the best thing for the moment is the players go back to training. Clubs can afford to look after them, make sure they train in a socially distanced manner and also look after their assets, which is the players. Do you know what I mean? Socially distanced training, keeping their players in the shape they need them to be for when football does resume or just, you know, just as like, I don't want to say the word assets, but you know, they are assets. They need to be kept fit. They're a product of the club. Of course, they're human beings, but the club spend a lot of money on them. They want them to be healthy and, you know, being healthy is important as a footballer regardless. So start with that. Start with the testing. And like Eva says, get through phase one, see who tests positive, who doesn't, how the club's going to deal with that. Are they going to isolate that single player, put them into a quarantine like some leagues have done, or are they going to do the entire team? I believe Italy's done that. Their protocol is not the individual. If one is found positive, I believe they quarantine the whole team, which is obviously a big deal. There's a lot of responsibility on the Premier League's shoulders to look after the footballers, to not tease the public with telling them football's coming back, they're not coming back, to be responsible and not taking loads of resources away from the NHS, especially when England is still in a crisis in many ways. So really I wanted to make a video, I wanted to talk about it because there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes and while I do report on Chelsea news and transfer stories, that stuff can remain and go on digitally. You know, there are Zoom meetings, there are players considering their long-term future, knowing that perhaps they won't be playing football for a little while and that still exists. So it's normal to consider, for clubs to consider purchasing and selling players removed from the immediate resumption of football. So that will go on and you know more news stories might surface that I report on regarding that. But with football itself resuming you have to look at the immediate situation and the, how delicate it is and ask yourself are we getting the full picture here? Do we know everything about the finances? Is it genuinely safe to resume or is it just a billion pound industry dictating what happens next? I mean, if you were a footballer, would you feel genuinely concerned and maybe like scared to resume football? Um, you know, like even if you're about to win a title or get relegated, what will prevail in your mind? Tyro Mings obviously tweeted out, look, if a top three or a top four club player expresses concerns about the resumption of football everyone would respect it i'm paraphrasing here by the way um you know good thought but if someone in a relegation fight does it oh they're just scared because they don't want to get relegated do you know what i mean so it is a delicate it's delicate territory here that we're tiptoeing around so i wanted to make a video express my thoughts that i'm not 100 percent decided on the resumption of football and actually I respect my viewership very, very much. You guys have always put in interesting and intelligent comments down in the comment section below. So I wanted to reach out and use this opportunity to get the thoughts of you guys for this instance. How do you feel about the resumption of football? Do you think it can be done? Do you think we've got the full picture here? Do you feel uncomfortable with it? What are the factors that you consider 
when maybe like accepting the resumption of football. Get down in the comment section below and really express your thoughts on this matter. Um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this video I've done today, guys, please do like the video. That means a lot and please do consider subscribing if you've not yet done so and you're interested in daily Chelsea football content. Also, if you want more sort of less formal content from me, I've got a second channel called Jan's Yard where I do daily live streams. Now, whether that's like a Bundesliga watch along or I'm playing FIFA Chelsea career mode, I always generally do one a day. So please consider going to check out Jan's, Jan's Yard. I'll leave a link in the top of the description. Feel free to follow me on social media as well at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football that might or might not start soon, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.